Hey, Emma here from Catapult. Um, just going to walk you through today a little bit about the acute chronic ratio and um, how you can apply this to your own training setting uh, with a little bit of research um, on some past and current literature um, to give you a bit more of an insight. So it the model of training stress balance and understanding this relationship between fatigue and fitness um, really started back in the 1970s uh, with Bannister. And here um, he suggested um, having this optimal uh, zone really between fatigue and fitness, correct training load and optimal recovery time to make sure that um, the athlete had the right balance to perform. And it was really from this model here, you know, a lot more studies started coming out and a lot more literature um, around specifically undertraining, overtraining, and this link between fitness uh, and fatigue to induce positive performance. And there's a one study um, in particular back uh, in 2009 by Peggett, Newton, and McGowan who started to investigate um, the effect of changes in training load uh, week to week and injury rates. And they found that there was a 40% increase in injuries um, when the training load was modified by greater than 10%. And similar results have been found um, by Gabbett, uh, the study last year, 2016. Um, and here you can see in that chart there, that as soon as those training loads start being modified by more than 15%, that the likelihood of injury increases to between 20 to 50%. Um, and so I guess uh, that that's sort of the start of thinking of load progression and planning and understanding what was my current week look like in regards to this this previous week. Um, but I guess the the big question is: Is there an new way of thinking can do we need to be also taking into account not just the previous week but looking at uh, a longer period of time of what our athlete has been been used to uh, used to used to doing so there was there's been some recent literature around using this acute chronic ratio um, where we're defining the acute time frame as being the athlete's most recent workload and so this is typically uh, the state of fatigue is another way of defining this. Um, it's usually between three to seven days in duration, but it will vary depending on sport and personal preference. Um, we will go through that a little bit. Uh, the chronic phase is defined then as the athlete's fitness. It's what the athlete's been prepared for. It's what their body is used to doing. Um, so <clears throat> it's and it's really just this combination of the two that is seen to be uh, it's much stronger to look at the acute and the chronic together than it is to look at separately um, and it's been shown in both cricket elite uh, level rugby rugby league and Australian football that these spikes in this workload ratio have been correlated to injury risk um, just a little bit around how do we calculate, how is this calculated? Um, well, in the traditional example, if we use 7-day acute and a 28-day chronic, um, have a look there on the, the top graph. That's an acute chronic. Uh, acute is the, the bar. The chronic is the area. And then the ratio is the line. And then below that in the orange, that orange bar, that's just this athlete's daily load for this period of time. So we can see that uh, on the 17th of June, um, that, that day there is representing the rolling average of that day in the previous six to make up my seven-day rolling. And that acute load is 404. Um, the chronic load is looking at that 17th of June, and it's then looking at the previous 28, sorry, 27 days. And 28 would include that day. And so her chronic the chronic load is 251. So then um, if I take the 4, 404 and divide it by 251, I get a ratio of 1.6. Uh, what that's telling me is based on this data, in this previous seven-day rolling, this acute time frame, she's done more work 
load than what she has done or what her body is used to doing in the previous 28. Now you can see in the daily graph below that that there's a gap in the data and that gap may be due to the athlete not wearing the device. It may be that they did not, they didn't train. Um, uh, this sort of shows the importance then of having consistent data also when you're trying to analyze this information, uh, making sure that if that was actually days off, it was that's that is that is true. If she was or he was out practicing, um, then making sure that you as much as possible wearing the device. Um, but it's um, yeah, as I mentioned in the previous slide that sees spikes in workload that have been significantly related to a high injury risk uh, and Blanche and Gabbett in 2015 um, showed that across those those three sports that 1.5 seemed to be the, the danger zone. So just to touch on that a little bit more, um, this is a really good starting point if you're trying to interpret the acute chronic work ratio and understand perhaps where's a safety zone for me to sit between. Um, so here um, this 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 green shading area is showing me uh, that that zone of 0.8 to 1.3 is a a, um, a good zone to be in to reduce my likelihood of of subsequent of injury, um, but also make sure that I'm still prepared. So we got to remember that the athletes need to be able to perform under the worst case scenario, um, and in fact, it's um, it's also been shown that a higher chronic load may actually reduce injury risk. So it's trying to find this balance between uh, not doing too much and not getting into that danger zone of spiking and changing the loads, but making sure that the athletes are being built up to, to have this, this chronic, this, this high chronic load and maintenance throughout the season. Um, so that's, uh, that's a, a good paper to, to get started around the sweet spot and understanding those ranges. Um, just a practical example here of how the ratio has been used uh, in an injury to prediction um, setting. So he, this was an example from a rugby league athlete who suffered a hamstring injury and they were injured week 16 and week 19. And you can see that's following two load spikes. Typically the uh, injuries tend to occur in the week of the acute chronic ratio spike or the week following. Um, and and here uh, the acute chronic ratio is actually being applied to high speed running, uh, which um, which brings a good point here uh, that that Joe mentions in her blog post um, that it's it's really important to consider um, each injury uh, and also which metrics are most important to track in relation to that specific injury. So here hamstring without question is. Um, extremely uh, high speed running is extremely relevant to a hamstring injury um, but making sure that that we're being mindful of the metrics in combination with injury. Um, this was a another study done looking at multiple metrics and multiple time frames um, across different acute uh, windows and chronic windows and um, when uh, Kerry ran they, they ran um, all the metrics through they actually found that the, the moderate speed running in, um, this was Australian rules football, <coughs> excuse me, um, showed the best prediction of injury likelihood um, and that the both the three or the six day acute phases showed a pretty uh, similar correlation um, and they found that the 21 day was actually uh, a little bit better at predicting than the 28 day. So this brings up an important point that uh, you do need to perhaps take the game schedule into account um, and also investigate for yourself different time frames to see for you which one suits best and which one perhaps has the best prediction uh, in your sport. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, this is a, all again the injuries here, the tracking all non-contact injuries. So how do you view this? Uh, well, you can view it, uh, if you're doing the 7 and 28 day acute chronic uh, ratio, you could view it as a week. Um, so instead of having the, the days down the bottom, you could have weeks down the bottom. Um, the only downfall of this is that uh, it doesn't uh, always provide you with the, the greatest detail in your analysis. 
Um, if you jump on and have a look at the this blog post here, um, it provides a good example of showing that the difference between looking at a week uh, and looking at the ratio just displayed for the week and then diving deeper into each day within the week. Um, that just gives you a much clearer representation of your load progression. Um, so how do you do this now in OpenField? Um, well, if you jump into settings and you go into your teams, um, you can see here that you can modify your own, the acute and the chronic uh, durations yourself. Um, and you can do this without doing any other modification. You just need to change this on the cloud uh, and then just save those changes and, and that we, that all your data will change once you refresh the browser. Um, so once you set up your uh, time windows here, um, then I'm going to go and hit a blank tile from a dashboard and from the wizard um, you can select the acute chronic ratio as an option there. Go through the prompts and you'll then end up with a graph uh, that looks something similar to this. You'll see that the bar here is showing the acute load, uh, the chronic load is the area and the line will be your ratio. So if you hit into the settings and go series you can modify any of those chart types that you like, uh, turn on data labels, edit the decimals. So you can do all your normal editing function here. Um, you're only able to view the acute chronic ratio uh, with the daily uh, daily days down, down the bottom. Um, and just uh, a little bit of a, a quick recap. The so this acute chronic ratio is, is an effective method of tracking your load progression. It's um, most effective when you're looking at the combination of both acute and chronic rather than in isolation. Um, in saying that, there is research that's suggesting that the chronic load is important and having a high chronic load can actually help to prevent injury. Um, your The time windows that you're looking at, it may actually uh, be better to use different time frames for different metrics um, and uh, carries showed that in regards to the moderate speed moderate speed running and and also playing around with your uh, time frames based on your competition schedule and and what suits for you in your sport and um, again yeah looking at different metrics and seeing whether there's different time frames that you'd prefer to use um, all of the these slides are all available for you to download and uh, this is just a list here of, of all the references. Thank you.